Hello, I'm Juliana Michaels and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how I created this trio of Halloween tags using some of the dies and embossing folders from the recent Tim Holtz Sizzix Halloween 2023 release. I'm going to share with you how to use distress embossing glaze with an embossing folder to create the background for each tag. And I'll also be sharing all the steps to create the embellishments and other details I added. If you're interested in the exact products I used, you can find a complete supply list in the description box below with affiliate links to scrapbook.com. When you shop through those links, it supports me and I really appreciate that so very much. Now let's get on with the making. To create this set of tags, I'll be working with the Moonlight die set, the Halloween Night die set, and the Cracked 3D Embossing Folder. For the tag base, I'm using Distress Tags, which are a heavy stock mixed media paper and can handle different types of mediums. Off camera, I lightly spritzed the tag with water using a Distress Sprayer, placed it inside the embossing folder, and ran it through my die cutting machine. The water makes the paper more pliable and really allows it to take in all the details from the embossing folder. As you can see, the impression is really cool regardless of which size you choose to work with. I'm going to be working on the side that has more raised areas because it will work best for this technique. I'm using a Versamark Watermark Embossing Ink Pad as my ink and Distress Embossing Glaze in Hickory Smoke, Villainous Potion, and Prize Ribbon. Here I'm taking the embossing ink pad and rubbing it gently over the surface of the embossed paper. I only want the ink to be applied to the raised areas. I then place the tag over a piece of printer paper and begin applying the various colors of embossing glaze. I like to use my fingers to pinch out small amounts of the powder and then sprinkle it over the surface of the tag. As you can see, I create little areas of each color and then repeat these sections to help spread the color across the tag. Once the tag is covered with the powder, I lift it up and tap off the excess powder that didn't stick to the ink. If there are any areas you miss, you can add more powder if desired. Here I'm filling in any missed areas with the excess powder. I then pick up the printer paper and dispose of the excess powder in my trash can. Next, I use a heat embossing tool to apply heat and melt the powder until it turns shiny. You may be wondering where the black came from that you can see on the tag. To do that, I used a black soot distress crayon. I applied the crayon by coloring it directly onto the tag. I then spritzed a small amount of water onto my craft mat, dipped a stiff bristled brush into the water, and then used the brush to blend the color and spread it into the cracks and crevices of the embossed design. I continued applying the crayon until the entire surface was covered with color. I then rubbed over the tag with a damp paper towel to remove the crayon and restore the shine from the embossing glaze. To embellish each tag, I die cut the individual trick-or-treaters from the Halloween Night die set. I cut them from Distress Black craft stock. This is a craft paper that has black printed on one side. After I die cut the image, I gently rubbed a sanding disc over the paper, but you could also use a fine grit sandpaper. The sanding removes some of the black and reveals the craft core, which creates a distressed look. I like to leave the die cut in the paper I cut it from because it helps prevent me from tearing the die cut as I rub over it with the sandpaper. Next up, I'm creating the moon. For this, I use a smaller moon from the Moonlight die set. I cut the base layer from a piece of cream colored cardstock and the top layer from a pale yellow cardstock. To give the paper more interest, I smushed a Distress Oxide ink pad in old paper onto my craft mat. I spritzed the ink with water using my Distress sprayer and then smushed the die cuts into the ink. I then dried the paper with a heat tool, but you could also set the paper to the side to dry. Once the paper was dry, I used a blending tool to ink the edges of each die cut using Walnut Stain Distress Oxide ink. Next, I adhered the layers together using a liquid adhesive. 
Here I'm using Distress Collage Medium. Because the shape of this is a little wonky, it can be difficult to get the layers lined up perfectly. If they aren't, you can use scissors to trim off any excess and then just re-ink the edges. For the grass below the trick-or-treaters, I'm using the Tim Holtz Decorative Trims die set and the largest pinked edge to cut a piece of green cardstock. To add interest to this, I once again applied Old Paper Distress Oxide ink to my craft mat, spritzed it with water using my Distress Sprayer and smushed the die cut into the ink, and then dried it with my heat tool. I finished it off by using a blending tool to ink the edges with Walnut Stain Distress Oxide ink. Here you can see how the pieces I've created so far will come together on the tag. To create the little tag that says Boo, I'm using the Tim Holtz Alphanumeric Tiny Type Lowercase Die Set for the word Boo and the smallest tag from the Tim Holtz Tag Collection Die Set for the tag. Here I've already spelled out the word Boo and I'm making sure it will fit on the tag by laying the die over the letters. Here I'm checking to make sure the exclamation point is right side up. With the word spelled out and the dies positioned with how I want them to appear on the tag, I placed a piece of mint tape over the dies. You could also use a piece of washi tape. I was then able to pick them up and keep them together how I wanted them. I placed the dies stuck to the tape onto a piece of distressed black craft stock and die cut them from the paper. Next, I placed the tag die over the word and used another piece of mint tape to hold the die in place as I ran it through my die cutting machine. Off camera, I cut the tag from a piece of mixed media heavy stock as well. This is the same paper the tag bases are made from. I then adhered the black tag on top of the cream colored tag. And here I'm adhering the inside of the letter die cuts to give the word a more finished look. You could also adhere the letters to a tag and use them that way if you like. I then finished it off by sanding over the black craft stock with the sanding disc just like I did the trick-or-treater die cut. I didn't film the other details I added to complete the tag, but I'm going to discuss them with you now. Here you can see the black crinkle ribbon I created using seam binding. To make this, I cut a length of seam binding, placed it in a plastic bag, and sprayed black soot distress spray stain into the bag. I then worked the ink into the ribbon, pulled it out, crinkled it up into a small ball, and dried the ribbon with my heat tool. After I tied the ribbon onto the tag, I used a jump ring to attach the small tag to the ribbon. Before I attached the ribbon though, I added some machine stitching with black thread around the outer edge of the tag. To adhere the moon and trick-or-treater die cuts, I used double-sided foam adhesive to give them a little dimension. And I used double-sided tape to adhere the grass. The last touch was the addition of the orange pumpkin. Originally, I was going to leave them all black, but I cut one of the pumpkins out of orange cardstock and inked the edges with walnut stain distress ink just to see how it would look. As soon as I placed it onto the die cut, I knew I had to add them to the other tags. And there you have it, a fun set of Halloween tags that can be used as cards, treat toppers, or just as decor as you decorate for the upcoming Halloween season. I hope you enjoyed seeing how these came together, and as always, a link to the written instructions and more photos can be found in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. I'm truly grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much and it would mean so much to me to have your support.